The serial murderer earned the nickname Hannibal the Cannibal and was responsible for the deaths of four individuals, three of whom were incarcerated. The name Blue was initially given to the criminal known as Hannibal the Cannibal in Britain. This was derived from the color of the face that his first victim had when he slowly strangled him to death. He was eventually given the nickname Spoons for more brutal reasons, such as when he killed another person and left the body with a spoon protruding out of the skull and a portion of the brain missing. This occurred after he had been incarcerated for other reasons. Before he was arrested and sentenced to prison, Robert Monsley had already committed one murder. Because of his three further murders when he was incarcerated, he became one of the most dreaded convicts in Britain. In fact, he was so feared that he was placed in a glass cage beneath Wakefield Prison. It is eerily similar to the one that became famous in the film Silence of the Lambs, even though it is not the same. Maudsley's version, on the other hand, was constructed in 1983, which is seven years prior to the debut of the film. More than four decades have passed since Maudsley, who is now 67 years old, was placed in solitary prison. His harrowing experience was recently repeated in the eight-part documentary Making a Monster, which was broadcast on the Crime Plus Investigation Channel. Broadmoor Hospital at Crowthorne, which is located in the county of Berkshire, was the location of Maudsley's second murder, which took place inside the facility. David Francis, a convicted pedophile, was sent to Wakefield Prison, which is a maximum security facility, after he was subjected to the most severe forms of torture, including the insertion of a spoon through his ear and into his brain. There he caused the deaths of two more individuals, as reported by Mirror Online, and at that time, it was determined that he was too dangerous to remain in the company of other prisoners. In 1983, he was hidden away in the dungeons of Wakefield Prison in a cell that was referred to as the Glass Cage due to the fact that it was so indistinguishable from the cell in which Hannibal Lecter was held in the Hollywood film Silence of the Lambs. Over the course of nearly four decades, he has been entombed there for a total of 23 hours each day. The Glass Cage. What does it look like? In addition to being enclosed in thick, see-through acrylic panels, the cage measures only 5.5 meters by 4.5 meters and features enormous bulletproof windows that allow jail guards to observe the individual within. A table and a chair are the only items of furniture that can be found in the cell, and they are both made out of compressed cardboard. Both a sink and a toilet are fastened to the floor with bolts. The door of his cage is constructed of solid steel, and it opens into the cage itself. Food and other stuff are brought to him through a small slit in the door. His bed is a concrete slab. It is impossible to set him free. When Maudsley was just 21 years old, he committed the murder of a customer who had shown him photographs of children that he had sexually molested. This was the beginning of his journey into criminality. Maudsley was one of 12 children who were all placed in foster care when he was still a young child. He was born in Toxteth, which is located in Liverpool. However, after spending eight years at Nazareth House, a Catholic orphanage located in Merseyside, his parents came back to transport him and his siblings back to their chaotic household and the poverty that they had been living in. This was the beginning of years of pain and torture at the hands of his father, who would frequently subject his children to physical violence. In order to protect his siblings, Maudsley frequently endured additional beatings. He was confined to a single room for half of the year, and throughout that time, the only thing he was aware of was the brutality that his father had committed against him. Despite the fact that he was able to escape his family when he was 16 years old, he quickly fell into a downward spiral of drug misuse and supported his habit by working as a rent boy. One of his clients was John Farrell, and in 1974, he garroted him after showing him images of children whom he had sexually molested. Farrell was involved in the abuse of minors. Due to the severity of the murder, the victim was given the nickname Blue by the police. This was due to the color of his face. As a result of the recommendation that Maudsley should never be freed from prison, he was sentenced to life in prison and transferred to Broadmoor Hospital. From that location, in the year 1977, he claimed his subsequent victim. Maudsley and another patient, David Cheeseman, barricaded themselves in a cell with David Francis who was an individual who had been convicted of sexually abusing children. The moniker Hannibal the Cannibal was given to Francis as a result of the horrible torture that he endured for a period of nine hours. At one point, they managed to force a spoon through his ear and into his brain. Francis had already passed away by the time the guards eventually busted down the door. Maudsley was sent to Wakefield Prison. 
However, on July 29, 1978, he strangled and stabbed wife Hiller Selmy Darwood in his cell, and then placed the body under the bed. This occurred just one year after Maudsley had been transferred there. He then attacked Bill Roberts, who had been incarcerated for sexually assaulting a girl who was seven years old. This occurred after he had started following the prison wing in search of his next victim. Before chopping at his skull with a handmade dagger, he stabbed him to death and then proceeded to kill him. At the moment when Maudsley was satisfied that Roberts had passed away, he approached a jail officer in a composed manner and informed him that there would be two fewer people for supper that evening. And it was at that moment that construction of his unique cell got underway. In the past, Maudsley has stated in an interview that he experienced torment while being held in solitary confinement. I see this in part as going back to my childhood and going back to the room where I was detained for six months, and that drives me crazy. He added, it's a tormenting experience for me. Despite the fact that there is a dearth of optimism, it does not appear like I have anything to look forward to. I have the impression that no officer shows any interest in me and that their only concern is choosing the appropriate time to open the door and then making sure that I return to my cell as quickly as possible. I think an officer could stop and talk a bit, but they never do, and it's these thoughts that I think about most of the time. According to Maudsley, his time spent in solitary confinement was having an effect on his speech, and he was no longer able to talk effectively due to the fact that he was unable to make eye contact with other people. Maudsley made a last-ditch effort to find companionship in the year 2000 by pleading with the authorities to reduce the conditions of his incarceration. As a means of ending his life, he requested that he be given a cyanide capsule in the event that he was denied the opportunity to have a budgie as a pet. His applications were not granted. The prison authorities see me as a problem, and their solution has been to put me into solitary confinement and throw away the key to bury me alive in a concrete coffin. He had previously written, when it comes to them, it makes no difference whether I am angry or not. They do not know the solution, and they do not care as long as I am kept out of sight and out of mind. They do not know the answer. In the upcoming episode of the eight-part documentary series, Making a Monster, which will be produced by Crime Plus Investigation, the horrifying story of the killer will be presented. One of the statements made by a spokesperson was as follows. In the end, what makes Maudsley almost unique among serial killers is that he can be seen as more tragic than evil. He is a man who is driven to terrible acts, only against sex offenders and other criminals, by the very real demons of his past. He once claimed, when I kill, I think I have my parents in mind, and I believe that to be true. There would have been no need for any of these people to have died if I had murdered my parents in 1970. If I had been successful in killing them, I would be a free guy who has no worries in the world while I go about my daily life. Subscribe to our channel for further videos. Also share this video and hit that like button. Thanks for watching.